In today's video, we're gonna check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. I live off grid in the mountains in the middle of nowhere and people love to comment when shit hits the fan that we're gonna be the first people that they come after. But let me tell you how far in the middle of nowhere we live. We are about 12 miles from a main road. We're about an hour and a half from civilization, which means a McDonald's, Lowe's, Home Depot, anything like that. So if things were to go horribly wrong in this country, which I believe that they probably will, the only people who are going to be out here are the people who live out here. People are not going to be venturing. The government is not going to be venturing to the people in the farthest corners of the country anytime soon. The people in the cities, in the suburbs, and even in the partially rural areas are going to be the ones that will be hit first. You have to drive through desert and mountains just to get to us from civilization. So I feel like we're pretty safe where we are. Ain't nobody coming to get us out here. I would really like to live off grid. I do not have the capabilities yet. One day I'm hoping maybe I can make it to the point where I can just completely live off grid and have my own forms of technology and my comfort, but being a f being far away enough from major cities and, and places like that would be really nice. And living on farmland is pretty awesome, I think. He makes people sleep in troughs, live on the street, watch corn on the street, and completely exposes people in the most insane way possible. So this judge in Ohio, Judge Chicanetti, has a very unique way of punishing people for their crimes. It's up to you to decide whether this is good or bad, so let me know in the comments down below. And the last one <laughs> is nuts. So he doesn't believe that putting people in jail is the best solution, thinking that it's just gonna cause them to re-offend and not really evaluate what they did. And then they just get stuck in the endless cycle, really. He has some creative punishments, especially for animal abusers. One woman dumped 35 kittens in a park that she just clearly didn't want. So the punishment she should have got was 90 days in jail, which he said, you can take that if you want to. Or he said you can go to jail for one week, donate $3,000 to the Humane Society, and then spend a night in the woods like those kittens had to. That is nuts. Another woman had a house which literally wasn't even fit for her to be living in, let alone her dog. Filthy, stinky, horrific conditions, and this poor dog was not in a good way. So the punishment that she got was to go down to the junkyard, them to find the smelliest, most disgusting plot of land in this junkyard, and literally sleep there, just sit there all day thinking about what that dog was living in. Now there are tons and tons more, it could go on forever. A man who shouted pigs to police officers was ordered to stand on a street corner for an entire day with a 350 pound pig with a sign attached saying this is not a police officer. A man stole a kettle worth $250 from the Salvation Army, so he was sentenced to spend 24 hours alone on the street, homeless. A woman who didn't pay her cab fare was ordered to walk 30 miles, which was the journey of the cab. A woman who pleaded guilty for an assault using pepper spray on her husband was given the choice of 30 days in jail or being pepper sprayed herself. Teenagers who flattened the tires on a school bus and had done this for a few weeks consecutively were ordered to throw a picnic for the whole school because their outing was cancelled when the bus was deflated. And a man who was caught with a loaded gun was sent to a morgue to see corpses. So yeah, pretty creative punishments. Do they work? Well, according to a statistic, he has way less re-offenders than the typical courtroom. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on this guy. Is he good? Is he bad? Or are you in the middle? And hit that follow button and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I don't know if I like it or hate it. Let me know in the comments or what you think because this is a unique way of punishing people for sure. Maybe even we'll see a little bit more in the future of more outcomes and more stories about it. The fact that a specialist has come forward and said that the video that that boy captured of the aliens in his backyard that were 8 to 10 feet feet tall was real i don't know if you guys remember but the teen caught on video these eight to ten feet creatures in his backyard at his los angeles home and people were trying to say he made it up lo and behold they just came forward and said they did extensive investigation and put it through multiple vectors to see if the video was forged or fake and it's real. What makes this crazy is that family had to be put on lockdown the government literally put their home on a lockdown and you guys still believe that they were lying. And if you don't believe me, here is the article. And this comes from newsnation.com 
and the title is Las Vegas Alien Video is Original. The article reads, a veteran crime scene recreation expert who's analyzed the video that purports to show two creatures in Las Vegas backyard says the video hasn't been altered and he believes he sees the images of not one but to be and says once you see it you can't deny it and that was scott roeder and what was crazier is that the police reported they saw something flying in the sky moments before that teenager called the police i'm going to show you the original video and the frame by frame where someone slowed it down but i think it's really crazy that a lot of people called these people liars and lo and behold they were telling the truth and there was something in their backyard here's the video of them checking the backyard look at the alien hiding there were multiple other videos there were some that showed the alien literally hiding between the slats in the uh in the gate in their backyard i don't have that one it seems like the internet has been scrubbed of a lot of the videos which is re very weird if you ask me but i completely believe them and i think a lot of people owe them an apology but if we have people saying that you know it's an authentic video i guess i've only seen that one clip that this person shown and to me I don't see an alien. I barely see anything. It's so blurry and distorted. It really kind of just looks like someone standing by a truck to me. It could be an alien. It is an odd coincidence that police officers seen something flying through the sky just moments before and then they got contacted that there was some large creature just walking around someone's yard. It does seem very suspicious, and the reactions of all the people seemed very genuine. Let me know what you guys think about this clip. If you guys have any information or more videos, please send a link or comment down below in the comments and provide a link to more of this footage because I am curious about it. I would just like to see something a little bit better than that. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for being subscribed. And to everyone that's not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of questions for DK where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories or theories in general, leave a comment starting with question for DK so that I can find it in the YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. Paranoia is like, paranoia is the worst thing ever. Like you're trying to decipher between like, what the fuck? Oh my gosh. The f***ing GoPro just fell. The f***ing GoPro just fell. Yo, what the actual going on right now? All right, so I'm losing it. I'm I'm at this. This is gonna drive me insane. Like this is legitimately like. This is fucking creepy. I don't care what you say. I don't care how big of a macho man you are. Nah. Like, this is nuts. 
I, I'm I'm pretty sure ninety nine point nine 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 percent of people would not ever be like dumb enough to do this. Like you're sleeping in a van, all the windows not tinted. Like the doors are unlocked for fuck's sake. Like I mean, oh my gosh. So instead of putting this thing back up on the um. Instead of putting this thing back up on that window, I might just set it on the ground. So what it looks like is these orbs are able to uh, break apart the uh, basic, uh, the fundamental state of what these electrons are tied to on this plane and break them out of equilibrium. And then what they can do is they can cause something called uh, quantum uh, macroscopic quantum coherence, which is that under the right conditions, uh, electrons will form into a matter wave and begin to self-organize. And so what is happening to this plane is that we have a unification of quantum and macro and that this plane can fundamentally act like a, a quantum object, even though it's a giant 777 macro scale object. And so when we look at this thermal video, the reason why we see this endothermic reaction is that we are seeing this phase state change of the plane where it is undergoing this macroscopic phase conjugation. As it's been described to me by Dave Rossi, who's a DOD engineer, it's like hitting jello and watching it vibrate, is that it's causing this uh, quantum entanglement effect where there may be a fourth orb somewhere else that's entangled to these orbs. And as the orbs converge on the plane, they're triggering this phase effect to occur, this phase change that is then having this plane move at the speed of light or superluminal speeds faster than the speed of light to a new location. Could theoretically be so you're talking else. about like Star Trek beam me up, Scotty. Not Sp Star Trek beam me up because that is that, that, that takes your matter and then reorder organizes it. Yeah, this we're not doing like, that in this case. Yeah, this is more like the warp speed of the Star Trek situation where they're able to go faster than the speed of light. It's so it is in some cases Star Trek, but not that type of teleportation that we're talking about here. Yep, we're talking about the double slit experiment in terms of having your wave function break down by observing it. That we so have just, been like, able to, just like the, 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 the energy can jump across, but none of it's observed. Yes. And this all goes back to potentially even Tesla. And I think that from what I've spoken to these engineers, it's all about electrical engineering and being able to manipulate electromagnetic waves in specific patterns, toroidal patterns, where they can be focused. And then you can create a gravitational wave that will allow these effects to occur where we can create this. So it's like surfing. They create the wave and the, and the yes. plane goes at 500 million miles an hour away. That's exactly how it's described in Salvatore Pius's high frequency gravitational wave generator is that they are creating a sailing effect. They're displacing themselves from space time entirely, which is why we see this non radiating barrier around the orbs. And then they're creating their own geodesics, their own gravity. This is why they look like they're running on train tracks in this video here. So a lot of people look at this and go, well, this has to be non-human intelligence. I thought so first when I first looked at it. But as I've dug into this case, I realized that, no, this is actually not thousands of years more advanced. This might be 50 or 100 years more advanced that the military industrial complex is keeping hidden. This is a snapshot of the film that was smuggled in 1991 out of a facility uh, just south of Area 5-1. Um, if I am truly in danger... That means that this film and this, this being is real and God help me. But if I'm truly in danger and this being is real, that means the extraterrestrial program is also real. And I say, God help us all. You did show me a slide of um, a comparison between the original version. Oh, and the yeah. Other. Yeah, folks, this is how it came. This is what Victor's VHS tape looked. There oh. it is. This is it. Yeah. This, so this is how the videotape came to Rocket Pictures, folks. On the right is the dramatic and darkened version for the, the documentary. Uh -huh. But this is what Victor brought to Rocket Pictures, this bluish where you can see the entire uh, arms and, and thor thoracic uh, 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 cavity of, of the bean. In this um, internal briefing from the DIA sent to me by someone who worked with the DIA years back, he must have from his contact. It said basically, um, the time date, who was in the viewing gallery watching this, which is called a thought projection interview, the facility that it was, um, what type of alien 
being E.T. this was, um, how the film was smuggled out of this top secret facility. And it wasn't S4, as Victor said. It was a facility called S2 Alpha. And we have the satellite photo of it. S2 Alpha. S2 Alpha is the building on top of the ground. It's got administration. And it's got the AHC beneath it, which is, there it is. That's it. That is the entrance to the alien housing complex, S2 Alpha, the S2 Annex. Folks, no one in ufology is going to bring you this. I have brought you this. You go down that ramp. You turn to the left. A guard comes out. He hooks up an exhaust to your car. You go in and exchange badges. Now beneath S2 Alpha is the AHC, the alien housing complex. This is what I was told. The alien housing complex. This this is where extraterrestrials were held, were retained for Project Aquarius, which was the alien retention and interrogation program. That was the unofficial name of those in the program. As far as those spheres that were rotating around the plane, it does make me wonder if those are not extraterrestrial and those are like U.S. or some kind of government technology, it makes me wonder why are they using it to make planes disappear? It also makes me wonder who are on these planes that are disappearing and if this technology is being used to capture or abduct or traffic other individuals of interest maybe on some of these planes that end up disappearing there are some really important people on there that have patented ideas and or send out information that someone doesn't want out there in the public it just makes me wonder you know what is going on it's pretty crazy but i do not find it to be too far from the realm of possibility that's that's the scary thing what do you guys think about this technology do you think that maybe it's alien technology that's taking these people to other worlds? Or do you think it could potentially be government technology and they're just kidnapping a bunch of people for multiple reasons? Let me know in the comments because either or is pretty terrifying. Think about this for a minute. If your God is all-knowing, omniscient, omnipotent, all-loving, never-changing, and all these terminologies that they like to tell you, you understand that as to be supposed fact, never question it. But then at the same time, you can be, quote unquote, cast into a lake of fire for all eternity for punishment and torment for sins that supposedly, according to that same book and text, you had committed before the foundation of the earth. In other words, you were born a heathen. You were born a sinner. You were born this and born that. You're told that you're this person and that you're that person and you're so evil and then you're coming out of the womb as this evil entity before you even have a chance to for- form your very first thoughts. And then as you're growing up, you're told and programmed and it's beaten to your head nonstop that you're a bum, you're a loser, you're a sinner, you're nothing, you're worthless until you get on your knees and grovel. And then you tell me that that's an all-knowing, all-loving God that you're worshiping. When in true reality, it's a big fear factor. And all you're doing is trying to save your own skin by following the rituals and hoping that in the end, it was accurate. Did LeBron James just out himself as a time traveler? These scoring outputs is uh, is insane. I wish I was back in like 2012 (laughs) right now. With the young legs, with with the the young young, young tires. Young young tires. tires. Yeah. (laughs) The tires was on. You heard it. 10,012. I went to Google to do more research. I found this Sports Illustrated article from 2021 asking the same question I am. And yet when I click on it, I get this error. Go try it for yourself. I found a different article by Motorboat Jones. Apparently LeBron was caught coming back from the future to watch himself play. Motorboat Jones points out that this is not surprising because LeBron James is a famous proponent of hyperbaric chambers and cryotherapy. And he's a capitalist investor, so through other forms of big tech, wouldn't be crazy if he'd found a way to travel through time. Motorboat Jones thinks cloning is also in play, and that we could be on LeBron number three. But time travel still is the most likely scenario. And so if it's time travel, we have to wonder, why did he come back here? Why didn't he just stay in the year 10,012? And so Motorboat Jones lists out all the possibilities. He says he could have come back to change something that's about to happen. He might want to show off his new hat. Uh, He might just want to watch himself play. He might want to warn himself about something in the future. He really wanted to watch a good Carmelo game, and maybe this isn't the first time LeBron has time traveled, and maybe the game wasn't meaningless. And so I have my own theory. Remember this scenario that everyone laughs about? Fate of the universe, what players do you want shooting the shots? 
what if in the future this is real? What if in the future we have to play a basketball game to save humanity? And what if LeBron is the best player from the year 10,012, but they're still not good enough to win? And so he has to come back in time and change things. That's why he started the Mind the Game podcast. A whole generation of future basketball players will grow up watching this, and they'll have a leg up. They'll be smarter players and thus better players. It's a way to skip tens, hundreds, maybe thousands of years in basketball evolution. Because for all we know, maybe if this show doesn't come along, then the Stephen A. Smith meta sets us back as a basketball generation. So I believe LeBron James is a basketball agent from the year 10,012 who traveled back in time to try and prepare future basketball generations for the final battle that will determine humanity's fate. Wow. I have never once heard of this in my life. I never knew someone thought LeBron James was a potential basketball player time traveler that's pretty funny to me i mean it's a cool theory don't get me wrong but do i believe it not really it's just funny to see the coincidence of someone that looks pretty much just like lebron james but that also leads me to believe that it's not time traveling because if that individual time traveled to the past to watch him play a basketball game would he not look different instead of exactly the same unless lebron just doesn't age you know (laughs) and the idea of creating a show to help educate future basketball players and things like that i think is an amazing idea but let me know in the comments or what you think do you guys think that lebron james is a time traveler just in case you forgot east to west circumnavigation has been done millions of times But north to south circumnavigation has been done zero times. This flight from Taiwan to Los Angeles, an emergency happened along the way and needed to land the plane as quickly as possible. Why in the world would they land all the way up in Alaska? If we live on a supposed globe, Hawaii is just right there. Oh, I get it now. The flight from Taiwan to Los Angeles, Alaska is along the way. This flight from Argentina to India, an emergency happened along the way, so they decided to stop all the way up in Amsterdam. Like, why didn't they go straight across? Oh wait, they did. The flight from Argentina to India, Amsterdam, is along the way. This flight from Auckland to Peru, an emergency happened along the way, so they stopped all the way up in Los Angeles, passing the equator. Like, why would you pass the equator when you could have just flew straight across? Ah, makes sense. The flight from Auckland to Peru, Los Angeles, is along the way. Is that why, in their flight dynamic summary, assume a flat, non-rotating Earth? Guys, I could do this all day long. Flight paths, in and of themselves, prove that the Earth is flat and stationary. But send this to somebody that needs to see this. Y'all let me know what y'all think about these flight paths in the comments. But if you're not already following me, follow me so you never miss a video. And like always, God bless. I'm sorry, they just found what under the ice? I swear to God, if this is about Antarctica again... Actually, it's not. It's worse. Literally, over the last year or so, they've been finding some pretty crazy things under the ice, as I'm sure you're aware. Hundreds of new species of weird fish, some strange golden orb, which, like, they still don't know what it is, and now this. So scientists have revived a zombie virus, yet a 48,000-year-old virus which was buried in the ice, and they've just brought it back. Who had that idea, then? What a brilliant idea, mate. So samples of this were collected in the permafrost in Siberia, reviving 13 new pathogens, including this one which was frozen under a lake more than 48,000 years ago. Just, just wait for this. They found that the viruses remain infectious, despite being millions of years old. What? that? Nah. Sorry. This thing has been buried under the ice for hundreds of years and is now back and is still infectious. Honestly, I don't know what's going to happen, like, seriously. Why well, am I only seeing this now? But anyway, they're going to keep looking into it, so hit that follow button and I'll keep you updated. You know what is suspicious as shit? But the Vatican is pagan and they're parading around like they're Christian. Look, if you're Catholic, I apologize. You might want to go ahead and scroll on because I'm about to... Oh. On the surface, this doesn't look very pagan at all, but it's an obelisk, and obelisks were built in honor of the sun god to channel the energy from the sun god. Look, the Egyptians believed that the obelisk reaching towards the heaven acted as a conduit for divine energy, channeling the power of the sun god into the temples and cities where they stood. So why does the Vatican have one in the middle of their city? Hold on, I'm not done. When you look at it from the top, you can tell that the shadows are definitely tracking the sun's movement. 
And look at this. You can tell it looks like the pagan wheel of time. Worshiping the sun is a pagan practice. And all throughout the Vatican, you can find suns like this. Or they walk around carrying the suns like this. I could keep going with more and more examples. But just look at this last one right here. That doesn't look like he's worshiping the sun to you. I'm telling y'all, they worship the sun. And don't even get me started on this pine cone that sits outside the Vatican. They have came out and they have publicly said that it has pagan roots, but that it's not inherently pagan. The pine cone is supposed to represent your third eye and opening that and awakening. Not only do they have a massive ass pine cone outside the Vatican, but they also have pine cones on their hats. And you can read right here that the pine cone has ancient pagan symbolism. Oof. This close-up view of what the Pope sits in front of solidifies everything I think about the Vatican. It's suspicious as shit. It's creepy as shit. And they definitely know about aliens. Look, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. I don't know who created this shit. I don't know who painted this shit. All I know is that it's located in the Vatican. And the Vatican, to me, is suspicious as shit. And then you look at this art and go, y'all know about aliens? Quit playing. Because what is this? You're telling me this is supposed to be Jesus coming out of what? Resur it I think it's called resurrection. It's terrifying, first and foremost. Second of all, what is going on with his head? Why does it look like he's half reptilian or half alien or uh, just confused by the whole thing? I need them to quit playing in our faces like this because what is that? Clearly a spaceship, clearly a flying saucer. And then peep this guy right here looking up in the sky at somebody on a cloud or on some type of ship of some sort. I don't know. Is that an angel? Is that an alien? I'm going alien. This is the full painting over here. This is it zoomed in. What are we even talking about anymore? I'm not sure, but that sculpture of Jesus is really intense looking. And I've seen some people like reverse image them and it looks like a demon in the center with fire and stuff going around it. Really crazy stuff. And the Vatican has to know that that looks extremely sinister. A lot of the things that the Vatican showcases, their building, their imagery, everything about them screams satanic in a way, at least to me. But then again, that's probably because I'm not really educated on true satanic symbolism and all of that stuff is fine maybe. But to me, it looks sinister and evil. Let me know what you guys think about the Vatican's taste in art. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you enjoyed any of these clips, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.